Hey everybody and welcome to Leia's Lair. Here's our review of Star Wars The Book of Boba Fett Episode 2, The Tribes of Tatooine. Okay, so what we liked and didn't like about the episode. All right, well, yeah, I'll first start and say I really liked the beginning, the whole scene of them going into Jabba's palace, just the scenery, it's just so episode six right there, even with the door opening. And then, of course, you know, they have the assassin and they're trying to threaten him. Nothing's working. So then, of course, they hit him with the, okay, well, let's see what you think of the rancor. And, <laughs> oh, man, that was, yeah, of course the guy just like cracks, right? Like he's just like, no, please, I'll tell you, it's the mayor. <laughs> um, and of course there's no rancor, but yeah, I love that whole thing. Mm-hmm. And you get to see the whole setting again. Ah, episode six, love it. Um, yeah, and we get to see how the plot thickens around that too, right? Now he's on this goose chase of, okay, let's go check out the mayor. And then the mayor's like, oh, it wasn't me. Like mm-hmm. Maybe we should go over here. And then, of course, then, you know, what do we get? The return of the huts. Yeah, we get the huts. I love that so much. I feel we haven't seen a live-action hut in quite some time, so it was nice to have the return of the huts and the twins. Mm -hmm. So I guess we'll see what kind of happens now with that, but... Yeah, and it's kind of interesting because they're like, you know, in this, they're like, oh, yeah, you know, I took care of the, you know... Um, Bib Fortuna, mm-hmm. and then you know now I'm taking claim, and they're like, "Oh, Bib Fortuna, he didn't he didn't have any right over this. It's all about Java and and how the huts." But I'm like, "Oh, I'm like, well, how long was it, would that have been? You know, like yeah. that they didn't come for Bib Fortuna because you know that would have been like five years for sure. I mean, it's not like they can get around particularly <laughs> easy though. So. Just slithering their way but slowly. Yeah. I was watching all the poor people like carry them, and I was like, "Ooh, they gotta be heavy." Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, maybe they just had him in st- as a stand-in, you know? They're mm-hmm. like, oh, we're going to come, you just run it for us type thing. I don't know. But that's the one thing that was kind of like, huh, like that made me scratch my head a bit because then as soon as Bib Fortuna's gone, they're right there, like yeah. almost next day. I feel like Bib Fortuna was their puppet, though, versus Boba, who's just going to do yeah. what he wants and rule how he sees fit, right? So maybe they don't like that as much and they can't yeah. control him like they could control Bib Fortuna. Yeah, it's interesting because, yeah, he's just tearing stuff up on uh, Tatooine mm-hmm. now because uh, it's like all he has, he's making enemies left, right, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> left, right, and center. And, yeah. oh, my God, Kay, can we just talk about for a second how they finally brought Black Chrysanthemum yeah, that was into, wild. like, live action? As soon as I saw the Black Wookiee, I was like, <laughs> <gasps> it can't be! Yeah, and that's... it totally is. And I literally can't wait to see how... <laughs> The present plot thickens with Black oh. Chrysanthemum in it because he is crazy. <laughs> I feel like there's going to be, like, and it, it seems like, I, I don't know, this is the way I'm thinking of it. We only get seven episodes, and it seems like we're not getting a whole lot of screen time with the present plot. So it's no. Ki- so it's kind of like maybe this will lead up to, like, you know, a Boba, Black Chrysanthemum fight at the end or something. Or maybe that's going to happen sooner. We don't know, right? Oh my god, I would love but, to see him in action. But maybe that's going to be uh, the big thing that we have setting up for us uh, in the present plot. It's it's, it's kind of interesting to talk about these episodes because we're like talking about the present plot and then we're mm-hmm. talking about the past mm-hmm. plot of, you know, him training with the Tuskins, you know, with the speeders. Oh my god, stuff. I love that part and how they're just trying to jump on the speeders and just eating it every time. It was so comical. Yeah, it's it's so cool to kind of see Boba on this journey with the Tuskins. We get to see more about the Tuskins, you know, what they're all about, you know, and it's a, it's very uh now when you see the Tuskins and the other stuff, you're going to be like, "Whoa, like Yo, leave the Tuscans alone. Why are you calling them sand people, Luke? Yeah. Come on. like. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's really giving them a backstory and letting us know a lot more about their species that we didn't know before other than just, like, that mm. Luke is, gets attacked <laughs> by them. <laughs> yeah. Like, God, he's getting attacked by these wild sand people, and then yeah. all of a sudden it's just like, no, they're Tuscans, okay, Luke? And please, like, you're trespassing, Luke. Get back yeah. to your get back to your farm. <laughs> they, they are civilized, after all. Right? It's just, yeah, it's so cool. And I'm loving the whole aspect of, like, him getting trained, and, mm-hmm. you know, and then he's, like, he's... He feels the need to be like, yeah, I'm going to help these Tuscans out with all the problems that they're having. You know, a train keeps driving by randomly and shooting them. Yeah, that was so sad. Like, just brutal. They just, like, lost half of their group to the mm-hmm. stupid train. Yeah. And then it's like, and then he's like, I'll be back. And then he goes and gets some speeders from some punks, you know, <laughs> just totally. tears up that bar. And I laughed at that part because it was like, you know, he didn't even need to go in there and, like, help. But he just, like, 
just came in and like bashed some skulls and then was yeah. like, okay, now I'll take your speed. <laughs> yeah. Instead of just taking them to begin with, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like you really wanted to be like, okay, first I'm going to kick your ass, then I'm going to take your speeders. <laughs> you know? I yeah. like uh, It's so good. Yeah, good guy I, Boba. Good guy Boba. I really enjoyed the whole flashback scene and I also would wonder if it's going to delve any deeper into like a bigger story going on behind the scenes with the pikes and the spice smuggling because that always just seems to be like mm-hmm. a part of all Star Wars yeah, it's like we, we see so much of the pikes and spice and all that in kind of like all the, you know, we see them all in the live action, or not live action, in the in like the Clone Wars yeah. and, and, and what have you. But now we're getting to see it in live action, and that's kind of really mm-hmm. cool. Um, so I would like, yeah, it would be kind of interesting to see if there's going to be more about that um, and see if like, hey, maybe they're going to retaliate against mm-hmm. Boba and the Tuscans. I I'm, not, I'm not too sure, yeah. certain about that because uh, I kind of feel like maybe... We might be done with them. That's my in- inclination. Yeah. But, um, but it would be kind of interesting if that was a plot for that. Mm-hmm. And then, because it's also kind of, I, I see what they're doing. They're really showing how Boba can be a leader and run a crew and, mm-hmm. and manage these things. And that's what we're seeing in the present. Him taking on that role again about being like, yeah, I'm, I'm now taking over Jabba's, you know, his whole uh, cartel here. And he's ru- he's going to be the one who's running things. Totally. And then everyone's like, oh, you're just a bounty hunter. Well, no, because since we've seen him in episode six, there's been a lot that's been happening to yeah. him. And, uh, and yeah, it's cool. We get to see how he, how he debuts as, as the Boba we see in Mando. Exactly. That was so cool at the end when he just literally is the exact same Boba we see when he appears in Mando. Yeah. I am interested to see, though, moving forward, how much of the show is going to be in the past and how much is going to be in the present, you know? Like, it seems like there's a lot of... Right now, like, the majority of this episode was in the past. Like, Mm -hmm. there was only a very, very short part of him even at all in the present. So it's like, are they trying to draw out the present timeline? Are they just trying to, like, give you a better idea of what he's been doing since then? Like, it's really hard to tell. Yeah, it's like, it's kind of like... I felt like they needed to kind of tell the story about how he's accepted into the Tuscans. So maybe they needed that extra screen time for this episode mm-hmm. um i i don't think that they're gonna necessarily do like all past or all present uh per episode i think they're gonna kind of switch off between the two mm-hmm. i think maybe you know maybe next episode we'll get a heavy present one yeah. you know and then you'll and only a little bit of past or yeah. maybe no past at all we don't we don't actually know how it's gonna go this is only the second episode mm-hmm. the first one was back and forth a couple times this one was only back one back and forth once yeah um so yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see how they're gonna set up this whole story up, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm re- I'm really liking the past stuff right now. Like once we were in the past, like when we were, once we saw that, well, once we saw the huts and the you know Black Sand, and I was like, oh my god, this is gonna be wild. And then they went in the past, and then I almost like. It's almost like, oh, I forgot about that. Like, I, thought <laughs> I forgot Black or and even showed his face in this episode because it was just so epic with the train and everything, right? Yeah. Um, we see how he makes his staff that's in The Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. We see how he learns how to fight like mm-hmm. in The Mandalorian, how he's bashing those skulls. And it's so cool because now when we go back and watch The Mandalorian season two, we can be like, hey, this is, this is all stuff that he, you know, theoretically learned from these times and it's so cool to see that in action and how he's been accepted into this uh, tribe of Tuscans and it gives it more meaning to see him in uh, season two I feel mm-hmm. now that we, if we go back and watch that right definitely so yeah very very cool uh, episode for sure definitely okay so in terms of a rating I'm gonna actually give this episode an 8.5 out of 10 I really, really like the flashback scene of Boba assimilating with the group of Tuscans and how he helps them take down the train that's been, like, harassing them for who knows how long. And I really just enjoyed the the thickening of the plot with the huts returning and, of course, the appearance of Black Chrysanthemum. I just, I'm so excited to see what is going to happen with that, and I hope we get to see him and Boba face off. I think it would be pretty epic. So, yeah, yeah 8.5 out of 10. Nice. I'm also going to give it an 8.5 out of 10. For part, pretty much like the same reasons as you. I love the huts being back. Very cool to see Black Stanton, you know, that black Wookiee uh, bounty hunter. Uh, the whole train scene was just pure epicness. Uh, and it's really cool to see Boba become a part of Tuscan, just like you said, and create mm-hmm. his staff and see how uh, he becomes the Boba we see in Mando season two. So, yeah, 8.5 out of 10. Nice, nice episode. And there you have it. Thanks for watching, everyone. What did you think of this episode of The Book of Boba Fett? Let us know down below in the comment section. And remember to like, share, and subscribe to the channel for more great videos to come. 
We hope to see you all again in Leia's Lair. But you are not a Jedi yet.